Hey guys, so for today's video in this series, we are going to take a look at the Chrysler 300C Touring Wagon. I have a whole series of these types of videos and I've already done many Dodge, Chrysler, and Jeep vehicles, so check out my playlist in the top right corner if you're interested in more videos about history, flaws, and why they got cancelled. In these types of videos, the first part focuses on looking back at the history of the car and all of the details and specs, and then we jump to talking about the events that led to the car being cancelled and any flaws that it had. This wagon did have a short life, introduced in 2005 and gone after 2010. So we begin back in 2003. The 300C Touring concept was released in 2003. It was almost identical to the production version, just an early glimpse of it. The first generation of the Chrysler 300 with the LX body was introduced to North America in 2005, and it was also sold across the world, like in Europe, Australia, and Japan. But unlike in the US and Canada, who only got the option of the 300 sedan version, Latin America, Europe, and Australia also got a five-door station wagon model, and that was called the 300C Touring. Production for the wagon started in the middle of 2004 and ended up being around for the 2005 to 2010 models before being cancelled. The 300C Touring is not to be confused with the Touring trim level or the 300C trim levels of the North American sedans, which are still around to this day in 2020. North America did briefly get their wagon fixed with the Dodge Magnum from 2005 to 2008. Many of the 300C Touring models were right-hand drive, and they were assembled in Austria by Magna Steyr, who had connections with Daimler, and as of 2018, still produces over 200,000 vehicles. One interesting fact is that Austria has more strict build quality regulations than North America, so it seems that the 300 wagons would be a little bit better built than the Magnums, which were manufactured in North America. If we look at the pricing, you can see a table on screen for the 2006 models in Australian dollars. The prices began at $56,990 Australian for the base 3.5 liter V6 model, and the SRT8 topped out at just under $75,000. If we translate that to British pounds, since the car was also offered in the UK, we are looking at around $32,000 for a base model and $42,000 for the SRT. We can translate that again to USD, where the base model came in at $43,245, and the SRT8 a whopping $57,000. So first of all, the wagon was exactly 3,000 Australian dollars more than the sedan version, which is about $2,300 US. The wagon itself is a massive price jump for our friends overseas when compared to the pricing for the 300 sedan in North America. For 2006, the base models in the US were just $23,405 and the SRT8 was just under $40,000. So that's nearly $20,000 US less than what they are paying for the wagon in Australia. Make it $17,000 less if you want to compare 300 sedan to sedan. So this was not a cheap vehicle by any means. The 300C Touring is obviously familiar. It has the same beautiful front end as the American 300 sedans, while the rear end is shaped similarly to the Magnum. It has the same wheelbase as the 300 sedan, but is 16mm longer and 52mm wider. It also shares a rear-wheel drive and suspension layout, and many of the engine options as well. The exterior had powerful lines, big alloy wheels, the huge signature Chrysler grille, and intimidating size. The body shares the same strong structure as the sedan, but has new rear side panels, roof, and rear liftgate. The liftgate was designed with the shape of an inverted L, and the hinges are set back over the load area. So that means when you open up the liftgate, you won't need to step back from the vehicle since it won't be hitting you on the way up. That liftgate even has a two-speed wiper and wash system. The loading area in the back is 19.3 cubic feet, but that will increase to 56.6 cubic feet with the rear seats folded down. And you can also add an additional 68 kilograms of capacity if you have a wagon with the optional roof bars. The top of the line SRT8 was introduced in 2006 with a modified front and rear fascia with unique air ducts and lower air dam, a functional rear deck lid spoiler that reduces lift by 39%, a body colored grille insert, body colored mirrors and door handles, and unique SRT badging. If you're wondering why you're not seeing too much color variety on screen, that's because just four exterior colors were available. Bright silver, brilliant black, midnight blue, and steel blue. The interior is offered in a light gray stone slash dark slate combination. This applies to the SRT8 models, but I can't confirm if those are the only colors available on the other trim levels. For the interior, the front and rear seats were basically the same as the sedan version with identical leg, head, and shoulder room. The extra room from the length in the wagon does come from the trunk. The wagons had an elegant Chrysler clock in the middle of the center console, 
and California walnut or tortoise shell style trim on the steering wheel, shift knob, and door pull handles. Standard features across many of the models include dual zone climate control, Xenon HID headlights with washers and auto leveling system, rear parking sensors, security alarm, and automatic windshield wipers. 2008 did bring a little bit of a refresh to the car inside with a new instrument panel and center console, and on the outside with changes to the rear bumper and taillights. The load area also got a removable tonneau cover, storage pins, four cargo tie-down loops, and a 12-volt power outlet. The SRT8 at the top of the lineup did get some extra features like rear park assist, front heated seats with memory functions and suede inserts, SRT8 stitching, and a 300 km speedometer. As for performance, the Touring Wagon had similar engine offerings to the regular 300 and Magnum. It had the options of the 2.7 and 3.5 liter V6s and the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi. There was also a 3 liter turbo diesel that was the property of Mercedes-Benz. The 3.5 and 5.7 were available in all-wheel drive in various years and countries, but the rest were all rear-wheel drive. The SRT8 did come with the 6.1 liter Hemi V8 that was found on all the other Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep SRT models during this time, from 2006 to 2010. No matter the model, all of the wagons came with the W5A 580 5-speed automatic transmission. On screen are the specifications of each of these engines, and the performance times as well, of the 2010 model year. I've also added the European measurements, so kilowatt for horsepower and newton meter for torque. Performance here is substantially slower than the sedan versions, and even slower than the Magnums by a bit, as it weighs up to 500 pounds more than a regular 300 does. As for the SRT8, it did come with 20 by 9 inch forged aluminum wheels and Brembo brakes, 4 piston calipers all around, and 14.2 inch front rotors and 13.8 inch rear rotors. I also want to bring up the UK SRT design models. This is a pretty good marketing idea where on all the diesel models only, customers could pay to add this SRT appearance package. So you get the SRT 20 inch wheels, SRT 8 body kit, chrome mesh grill, SRT 8 steering wheel, SRT 8 sports seats, carbon fiber interior details, and some SRT design badges on the deck lid. I think this was a really nice offering where people could pay for the premium SRT features that they wanted, just without the engine, suspension, and brakes. So that brings us to the next part of the video, looking at the reasoning for the cancellation and the flaws of the 300C Touring. I've come up with six different reasons and or flaws that refer to the car or Chrysler decisions, so let's have a look. And please note that for this part of the video, my goal is to not bash Chrysler or their products, as of course by looking at my channel, you can see that I'm a Mopar and Chrysler fanboy. This is just an interesting way to really deeply analyze the vehicle and see what was wrong with it, what mistakes were made, and why Chrysler chose to pull the plug on it when they did. So the first reason, as usual, is that there was very low sales due to lack of demand. I couldn't find very many sales totals, all I could find was the sales figures just for Europe for the 300C, which adds up to just over 47,000, but that does include both the sedan and the wagon over 6 model years from 05 to 2010. So this was definitely a cool vehicle, but it never had the sales totals to match its hype. The second reason was that the exact same thing was offered in sedan form in Europe and Australia. As we've been over, the sedan shared the chassis, suspension, engine, transmission, and even most of the body with the wagon. The interior was the same too. The sedan was cheaper by roughly $2,275 US if we compare the exact same trim level when compared to the wagon, and that's in Australia using conversion numbers. It was a lot lighter, the base model sedan was 3,758 pounds, while the base model wagon was 4,332 pounds, and that meant that each model across the lineup was quicker by over half a second from 0 to 60. The only real benefit to having a 300C Touring was the extra 16 millimeters of length, so that meant more trunk space and more cargo hauling capacity if you have the rear seats down, and also maybe the visual if you're really into wagons. In North America, the Dodge Magnum wasn't also offered in sedan form. If you wanted a wagon, you were forced to get the Magnum. If you wanted a sedan, you had to go for the Charger. But that wasn't the case here, with Chrysler offering both the sedan and wagon in the same market. 
And honestly, who would pay an extra $3,000 more for basically the exact same vehicle with the exact same features? Reason number three is because the pricing overseas was extremely expensive. As we went over earlier, the wagons were an equivalent of between $43,000 to $57,000 US back in 2006. Almost all of the 300C touring models were assembled in Austria by Magna Stair, so I'm not exactly sure why the prices were so high, as they didn't need to be exported to Europe, but they did need to be exported to Australia. Sure it was a nice car, but there's a point where any good just becomes overpriced. It was nearly the same vehicle that was available back in North America, just for far more money. The whole point of the North American success of the 300 was that it provided affordable luxury and performance for $30,000 less than a BMW or Mercedes. But with the more expensive foreign pricing, that wasn't the case here, and many people chose to opt out of the Chrysler and choose a different luxury vehicle instead at a similar price point. Many people did love the look of the 300C Touring both inside and out, and who could hate on the performance of either of the Hemis offered? However, one reason for the lack of success of this wagon was that it was too much of an American vehicle for overseas customers to truly embrace. Australian website whichcar.com.au wrote that, quote, It's a bit of a mixed bag, but the downsides are all down to the thing's American heritage rather than any engineering shortfalls, end quote. Other websites criticized the ordinary interior plastics, plastic bins, and overall fit and finish of the cabin, saying that these elements of the vehicle went against the thought that the 300C Touring was supposed to be a premium product. Reviewers even condemned the huge wheels and tires on the 5.7 Hemi, saying they made for a poor quality ride, even though there were only two 2560 tires on 18-inch rims. Moving on to reason number 5, the large wagon was not a good vehicle for tight European roads. It was only 0.1 inches wider than a Mercedes Sprinter van, so this was a massive vehicle that wouldn't fit too nicely on the tight, winding, narrow roads and parking spaces that are commonly found in Europe. If you've ever visited, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's simply more difficult to get around in a larger vehicle on a daily basis. Carandriver.com wrote about their experience as they drove the 300C Touring to and from the Geneva Auto Show in Switzerland from their hotel. They said that they had to do a three-point turn just to enter their hotel driveway, and they even had to back into driveways just to let oncoming vehicles pass on different roads. The car also barely fit in the automatic car wash they went to. So some of the things that we take for granted in North America are more difficult in Europe if you've got a big wagon like this 300C Touring. Most of those things the car and driver talked about would never be mentioned in an American review. The final reason is just a bit of a flaw, and that's the terrible name choice for this thing. Why on earth would Chrysler call it the 300C Touring, when both the 300C and Touring were separate trim levels in North America for the sedan? And that 300C Touring name applied to all models of the wagon. For example, 300C Touring SRT8, 300C Touring 5.7 Hemi, etc. So that gets really confusing, especially when you compare it to the sedan, and I'm really unsure of why they thought this would be a good idea for a name. So that's the end of this video guys, thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. It was definitely a loaded topic, but I tried my best to give you guys as much information as I possibly could, as always. What do you think about the Chrysler 300C Touring Wagon? Do you wish we got this model here in the US and Canada? Let me know down in the comments section below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.